Monday, March 10th, and we are meeting at the Fordyce Building. Would you please stand and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Call the roll, please. Mrs. DeAngelis. Here. Mrs. Lisey. Here. Mrs. Suda. Here. Mrs. Thomas. Here. Mrs. Van Holt. Here. All members are present. Thank you. Do we have any additions, revisions, uh, deletions to the agenda? Uh, Madam President, we have a, a one revision and one addition. The revision uh, is, uh, as has been submitted to the board, is item number 12, certified personnel for 2013 and 14. And the addition will be item 17A on the agenda, and that's uh, uh, consideration to approve contract. Thank you. At this time, do we have a legislative plan to report? Mrs. Yes. Lacey, are we going to adopt the minutes? Or? Oh, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Okay. okay. I have a motion to adopt the minutes for February 10th and 24th. Mm -hmm. So moved. So moved by Mrs. DeAngelo, second by okay. Mrs. Lacey. Call the roll, please. Mrs. Lisey. Yes. Mrs. Sudar. Yes. Mrs. Thomas. Yes. Mrs. Van Ho. Yes. Mrs. DeAngelis. Yes. Motion carries 5 0. Okay. No. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Yeah, I do have a report today. Actually, um, uh, yeah. the debate on calamity days continues. So it continues to go on and on. Um, not last week, but the week, week prior on Wednesday, February 26th. Uh, by a vote of 56 to 39, the Ohio House voted to refuse to concur with the Senate version of the amended, substituted House Bill 416. So um, just to recap, so under the Senate version of House Bill 416, districts would be required to use four contingency days after the five calamity days districts receive under the current law. Um, then, at that point, districts would receive an additional three calamity days, uh, followed by one day of professional development for teachers and staff. Now, the House had previously approved, so before that, <laughs> the House had previously approved two additional calamity days and two permissive professional days, but they did not require the use of, of contingency days or using days as part of the district's contingency plan. I know, it's a bit confusing, and I rewrote it myself because what they showed me in Facts and Flash was just way too confusing, so I had to go through it step by step and break it down for all of us. So. Since the House did not concur if the Senate changes, uh, a conference committee had to be con convened in order to resolve the differences. So a six-member six committee uh, was named, I think it was late on February the 26th. So after they voted late on Wednesday, they went ahead and uh, did committee members or named committee members. And the conference committee has met to discuss some of the differences, but a full voting session isn't going to occur until this Wednesday, March 12th. So we won't know what we're supposed to do or what the Ohio Department's going to do in terms of waiving calamity days. Uh, so until the governor has signed this legislation into law and until the Senate, or I guess until the conference committee works out the differences, we should probably just stick to what our district's contingency plan is in terms of calamity days because I don't think we're going to have an answer. Hopefully we'll have an answer by Wednesday, but just in case we don't, I think it just would be advisable that we just follow our district's contingency plan. Yeah, can I just mm -hmm. make a comment um, to uh, Madam President, members of the board, Ms. Lisey, just so the public knows, we are, uh, we have already planned to have the last day of school be our contingency day uh, per the union agreement. And so we're working until we hear otherwise. That's the way we're planning. And so everyone in the district received the communication uh, after our last day, which was uh, would have been our sixth day. And so everyone's aware that that would be our, our contingency plan. Now, if we have to do anything more than that, we, we just go from there. But at this point in time, the entire um, district is aware of what our contingency plan is, so we're real clear. And unless we hear something different, again, it doesn't sound like it may happen this week, it may not, we're going to work under that, and then we would come back and, and communicate something different. So we've got our plan. Pretty much together. Well, you know, and I really hope that they're able to work out the differences so that where there is some resolution by Wednesday. Um, I do know of one school, uh, it's a parochial school in Cleveland, that has actually reduced the number of uh, days for spring break because they have so many calamity days that they've occurred. 
or incurred over the, the school year. So I really hope that um, that some resolution comes to this so that kids don't miss out on a few days in spring break. Well, the other issue that has been brought to light, too, is, is when do you administer the days? Um, there's a school of thought that you do it at the end of the year, but also in that school comes the thought process that at the end of the year you don't get the same value that you would get if you had those days periodically throughout the year. So some of that is part of the indecision by the two groups trying to, to put that together because part of the, this equation has to do with professional days and then trying to look at what makes sense to have professional days as opposed to having instructional days and where does it make sense to put those days. So that's part of the issue. You've got a lot of districts that are not a lot, but several districts that have multiple days where it would really impact them. We're talking 16, 23 days in one district. And so right. it's, it's, like, it becomes very significant in how, how they strategically do this. So. Can I ask one question? What's the difference between a contingency day and a calamity day? A calamity day is a day that we actually give are, that is, is given to us. A contingency day is a, is a day by, by policy we've developed as our contingency plan if we're going to miss days. So, okay, so they're saying that we use our first set of calamity days, then use your contingency days, days, which days. means we would have to hold sessions, yes. and then we would get yeah. more calamity days. But that's why the House yeah, refused basically. to concur right. with that, because they felt we should just get two calamity days, two professional days straight out without having to use the contingency days. Yeah. So there, that, there's still some ironing out that needs to be done between the House and the Senate. Okay. So, <laughs> in the meantime, we'll just chart the meantime, we'll stay confused. <laughs> this is a little different, Madam President and members of the board, simply because used, it used to be that you just got the dates. Right. Now you, there's a, there are layers that you have to go through in order for, based off of these two proposals. So we'll see what happens. So that's why I was confused. So yep. as of right now, we're going to school one more day than with the original this calendar. Matter. Yes, that's, that's correct. correct. Okay. That's Sorry, correct. district. Yes. And that has been communicated throughout the entire district. Yeah. I thought I'd probably be done with that. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. And, you know, there are a few other things, but nothing that really applied to our district that happened in the state or the Senate, and uh, there was one thing in the House. But um, I'll just skip those, and we can move on to the uh, student achievement reports. Okay. All right. Do we have a student liaison report? Yes. Um, Angeles. First of all, this is March, and this is also March into kindergarten month. I can't stress enough how important it is to get your child registered early so the district can be prepared for you and your child can be prepared to come to us. Um, but how the registration process works, you need to call into the registration's office at 797-2933 and schedule your appointment to come in. The registration forms are online or you can pick up a packet here at the, at the Fort Ice building. Um, the packet has to be completely filled out before you register. And that way when you come in, have all the proper paperwork with you, and it's a very easy process and very mainstream from that point on. But I can't stress enough how important it is for you to get your kid, reg your child registered early so that we, have, we know how many children to expect in the fall. Second thing is, one of my favorite projects, Big Show, is only 11 days away to kick off the Big Show, or 10 days from today. It starts um, March 20th through 23rd at Euclid High School, and this year's production is Shrek the Musical. And they have evening performances Thursday, Friday, and Saturday at 7.30, and then matinee performances on Saturday and Sunday at 2 o'clock. Ticket price this year is $12 for adults and $8 for um, students and seniors. It's a great tradition. You'd really be sad if you missed it. It's a lot of fun, and a lot of work goes into it. Mr. Ferlito does a very nice job. Um, spring break. Spring break this year is April, the week of April 7th. We're off that week. We return to school on Monday, April 14th. Um, the from what I checked on all the calendars, all the buildings are closed, but the Fort Ice building is open that week. So you can come in and register your child for kindergarten during that time if you, if you make your appointment. Also, I want to let you know, I attended the Recycle Art Show a couple weeks ago at the library. I was very impressed with it, and I, I just want to stress this because coming up in a couple months now is going to be the Senior Art Show. And this was just a little taste of what the students did, and there were other students besides seniors participating in the Recycle Show. But my husband and I both were fascinated seeing the um, pictures that were made out of um, VHS videotapes. And just to see what the students had done. It wasn't just using a newspaper or a cereal box. It was all kinds of different things you wouldn't have expected. So I recommend to go to the, um, the Senior Art Show if you've missed this recycled art show in the spring. And I also want to congratulate the boys' varsity basketball team for their performance this weekend. 
Too bad we didn't get to go any farther, but we went a lot farther than we have in the past. I believe they were runner-ups for the district finals. So that's my report. Okay. Do we have any visitor? We did the addition. Do we have any visitor comments relative to the agenda? Seeing none, we'll move on to reports and recommendations of the treasurer, Mr. Vasek. Thank you, uh, Madam President, members of the board. Item 8 is a resolution to approve financial data as submitted to the board, and I recommend approval. Is there a motion? So moved. Moved by Mrs. Suter, our second. Second. By Mrs. DeAngelis. Are there any questions or comments? Call the roll, please. Mrs. Sudar. Yes. Mrs. Thomas. Yes. Mrs. Van Ho. Yes. Mrs. DeAngelis. Yes. Mrs. Lyzee. Yes. Motion carries 5-0. Item 9 is a resolution um, uh, amending appropriations. Uh, more specifically, this is in advance of $1,000 from the general fund to the new tournament fund. This is just um, uh, money uh, used for, for change, and it will be returned. And I recommend approval. Is there a motion? So moved. Moved by Mrs. Suter. Second. Second. By Mrs. DeAngelis. Any questions or comments? Thank you. Call the roll, please. Mrs. Thomas. Yes. Mrs. Van Ho. Yes. Mrs. DeAngelis. Yes. Mrs. Lysen. Yes. Mrs. Suter. Yes. Motion carries 5-0. And item 10 is a resolution to accept donation. Uh, this probably looks familiar to the board. Uh, the Robert Haynes uh, uh, gift fund uh, has provided uh, district with a uh, $500 donation every year uh, to be used in the music department, athletic department, and for the big show. And uh, in the total amount of $500. And I recommend approval. Okay, is there a motion? So moved. Moved by Mrs. Sudar, second. Second. By Mrs. DeAngelis. Any questions or comments? Besides, thank you very much, and we will send them a thank you. Yes. yes we'll Call the roll, please. Mrs. Van Ho. Yes. Mrs. DeAngelis. Yes. Mrs. Lysey. Yes. Mrs. Sudar. Yes. Mrs. Thomas. Yes. Motion carries 5 0, and that concludes my report. Thank you very much. Move on to reports and recommendations of the superintendent, Mr. Bell. Thank you, Madam President, members of the board. Mrs. Maroney, would you kindly go to the podium to make our personnel recommendations? Thank you, Mr. Bell. Madam President, members of the board, I present to you item number 11, certified staff 2013-14 with various staffing recommendations and ask for your approval thank you is there a motion so moved moved by mrs DeAngelis. Second. second by mrs sudar are there any questions or comments if you want to make a comment okay I'll call the poll please Mrs. Sudar. Yes. Mrs. Thomas. Yes. Mrs. Van Ho. Yes. Mrs. DeAngelis. Yes. Mrs. Lysy. Yes. Motion carries 5-0. Item number 12 is considered classified staff 2013-14 with various recommendations as well and ask for your approval. Thank you. Is there a motion? So moved. Moved by Mrs. Sudar. Second. Second. By Mrs. DeAngelis. Are there any questions or comments? Call the vote, please. Mrs. Thomas. Yes. Mrs. Van Ho. Yes. Mrs. DeAngelis. Yes. Mrs. Lysy. Yes. Mrs. Sudar. Yes. Mrs. Harris, 5-0. And item number 13, consider approved negotiated agreement. This is an 18-month agreement with our ECA Euclid Classified Association and ask for your approval. Thank you. Is there a motion? So moved. Moved by Mrs. Suda, our second. Second. By Mrs. DeAngelis. Are there any questions or comments? You want to explain who it is, who it covers. Euclid Classified Association covers all of our um, buildings and grounds, custodials, cleaners, and maintenance staff. It is an 18-month agreement, um, effective July 1st of 2013 through December of this year, 2014. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? Call the roll, please. Mrs. Van Ho. Yes. Mrs. DeAngelis. Yes. Mrs. Lansing. Yes. Mrs. Suter. Yes. Mrs. Thomas. Yes. Motion carries 5-0. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Moroni. Mm -hmm. Item 14 is to consider rescind the resolution and authorize the contract for Burgess and it's set two separate ones. First rescind. Right. First I have to rescind the contract. So item 14 is to rescind the previously approved contract. And I'm asking for approval. Is there a motion? So moved. Moved by Mrs. D'Angelo. Second. Second. By Mrs. Suter. Any questions or comments? 
Call the roll, please. Mrs. DeAngelis. Yes. Mrs. Lindsay. Yes. Mrs. Sudar. Yes. Mrs. Thomas. Yes. Mrs. Van Holen. Yes. Motion carries 5 0. Thank you. Now, item 15 then is to consider and authorize the contract with Burgess and Burgess making the adjustment, and I'm asking for approval. Thank you. Is there a motion? So moved. Moved by Mrs. Sudar. Second. Second. By Mrs. DeAngelis. Any questions or comments? Thank you for making the changes that were requested. And that was a good catch by um, board member DeAngelis, and uh, we made that adjustment. Thank you. Okay. Call the roll, please. Mrs. Lisey. Yes. Mr. Suter. Yes. Mrs. Thomas. Yes. Mrs. Van Holt. Yes. Mrs. DeAngelis. Yes. Motion carries 5 0. Thank you. Item 16 is to consider and authorize the contract with Burgess and Burgess making the adjustment, and I'm asking for approval. Thank you. Okay. Call the roll, please. Mrs. Lisey. Yes. Mrs. Suter. Yes. Mrs. Van Holt. Yes. Mrs. DeAngelis. Yes. Motion carries 5 0. Thank you. Item 16 is to consider and authorize the contract with Burgess and Burgess making the adjustment, and I'm asking for approval. Thank you. Okay. Call the roll, please. Mrs. Lisey. Yes. Mrs. Suter. Yes. Mrs. Van Holt. Yes. Motion carries 5 0. Thank you. Item 16 is to consider and authorize the contract with Burgess and Burgess making the adjustment, and I'm asking for approval. Thank you. Okay. Call the roll, please. Mrs. Lisey. Yes. Mrs. Suter. Yes. Mrs. Van Holt. Yes. Motion carries 5 0. Any questions or comments? Can we have an explanation on this contract and then compare it to anything we've had? Sure. We've had something before similar. I'm going to allow Mr. Pat Higley, our operations chief, to go to the podium and, and explain that to you. Uh, Synergistic is a, is a company that specializes in energy efficiencies. Uh, that they create through changing behaviors within the district and analyzing programs that are, are um, implemented within the district regarding our HVAC controls and so forth. Uh, water, gas also, are, and electricity are the three utilities, all three utilities that they look at and, and help us uh, come to some, some savings on. So it's a no-risk uh, financial, no-risk uh, program that's offered to the district. Of course, they, they are paid through the savings that they provide the district. And over a 10-year period, uh, they're estimating that savings to be about $3.2 million from our operating budget. Another way of us trying to control our finances the best we can. That's right. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Any other questions for Mr. Higley? No, I, that information that was in the mailer was, was, was yeah. good. Good. Thanks. Thank you. Okay. Are there any other questions or comments? Call the roll, please. Mrs. Sudar. Yes. Mrs. Thomas. Yes. Mrs. Van Holt. Yes. Mrs. D'Angelo. Yes. Mrs. Lisey. Yes. Motion carries 5 0. Thank you. Item 17 is to consider the approval and ratification and final payment of the performance of the, con of the contract, and this is to, uh, for the H. Back system at uh, Bluestone in Shoreview Elementary, and I'm asking for approval. Thank you. Is there a motion? So moved. Moved by Mrs. Sudar. Second. Second. By Mrs. DeAngelis. Any questions or comments? And these two schools, it's run up and running to everyone's satisfaction. Yes. So they had their commissioning and everything. That's then, correct. That right. How much more do we have to go to finally say these are done? <laughs> Um, we're still struggling with uh, a couple schools, uh, Chardon Hills and Arbor are still having some heating issues. Uh, and they're more, I won't say heating issues, HVAC issues. They're not so much the HVAC issues as they are, and this is where it gets confusing. Uh, it's, it's a question between is it a problem with the design that has been drawn by our architects and that has been spec'd by our architects, or is it a problem with uh, the installation uh, of uh, some of the heating coils and so forth that we've experienced some freezing with, uh, despite safeguards in place that shouldn't allow that. And, and it's a fairly expensive uh, repair to complete. So we've been tracking our time internally because we do have the expertise in-house in to repair these items. Uh, so we've been tracking not only our time but the cost of the equipment that we we put into place, and uh, that will be a discussion uh, at the end of this uh, end of the process, which is coming soon. A couple so months. Would that be um, if it can be determined that it is the fault of the installers, then they would be responsible, and if it's the fault of the architects, they would be responsible. To give it, we would much rather it be as clear cut as it's the fault of the installer. Uh, but the more we dig into it, the more it looks like it was a spec uh, error. And, of course, you've heard this before. There, there is a, um, 
a parameter of error that they allow within uh, these architects, uh, the, their specs and their scope of work. Um, I think it falls out of that scope, and that certainly would be our argument. But I think more so than this isolated incident will be uh, a negotiation of a package with all that has gone wrong uh, from the architect's uh, design, the design errors that we've that we've encountered throughout the entire project. So this is an isolated incident that will be negotiated in in, in a much larger um, settlement, I suppose. And you have all of those issues clearly documented. We sure do. Yeah. All right. Since this question came up, since we had one architectural firm that said they couldn't do all the work, we ended up with two. What's the one a subcontractor to the other architectural firm? Stantec is the architect of record. Okay. Uh, and so that leaves Lesco as, as their sub, who, who they brought on. Uh, and it's going to be very difficult to go back on Lesco because a, uh, a lot of these equipment and this specified work uh, was, was um, laid out by Stantec. So they're, they're the architect of record who, who we would be talking to regarding negotiating a settlement. Do we have any opportunity to put PCS on any liability on this since they were the project managers? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I think you'd be, for once, happy with PCS, all of us, at, at this point. Uh, PCS has basically been working uh, at no charge uh, for the last, gosh, probably five, six months now. Uh, and, and they've got about, uh, it's just over $200,000 that is still left on their contract to pay. And they have agreed to forfeit at least 180 of that. And we're in talks regarding the other 20. Uh, but there's $180,000 at the very least that they're not going to charge us for. Well, which is good to hear that they accept good. some responsibility for the that's errors. Right. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Not yet. Any other questions or comments? Call the roll, please. Mrs. Thomas. Yes. Mrs. Van Holt. Yes. Mrs. DeAngelis. Yes. Mrs. Lisey. Yes. Mrs. Sudar. Yes. Mr. Perry's 5 0. Thank you. Uh, item 18 is to consider out of the. Wait, wait, 17A. 17A. Oh, 17A. Yeah, that was the addition on this one. Thank you. 17A is to uh, ratify the. ECA agreement, uh, as you heard Mrs. Moroni mention, and I'm asking for approval. Why is it down here twice? No, this, this is, is, this is for the company. The YBA. Oh, okay, sorry. Yes, this, is, this is the addition, my, my fault. This is right. the addition to the, uh, that was the addition in the, in the beginning. This is for the, uh, asking for the approval of the privatization and the company to come in at uh, Central and uh, asking for uh, approval uh, for building maintenance and to provide temporary cleaning services to Central Middle School uh, at a rate of uh, $15,500 per month. And I'm asking for approval. Is there a motion? So moved. Moved by Ms. DeAngelis. Second? Second. By Mrs. Thomas. Okay, any questions or comments? Does this $15,500 per month include a pub? We are, I'm assuming that we're going to have a daytime custodian. Yes, we, we will have a daytime custodian. Uh, and uh, uh, then Phil, they're planning on six people right now, uh, just like uh, the number of folks that currently staff the building. Uh, and after a couple weeks, they're going to review that. They believe they can do it with five. Uh, we've asked them to put six in there just to make sure that we have some, some Regular, regular folks in there on, a, on a consistent basis. And so, and that that does then include a eight-hour. It does. Okay. In that one. Okay. And I think that we do need to make sure the public understands that this was part of the negotiated agreement that we could um, hire outside help. In correct. This was vote. That's correct. Uh, it was voted uh, on by the ECA uh, about a week and a half ago. Uh, and their members voted to accept uh, the board's proposal for, for settlement in, in a contract uh, for the next 18 months. 
Uh, there will be talks from now until October regarding uh, some other financial uh, savings that we can experience with the group, and those negotiations are going to be ongoing uh, until hopefully we, we come up with what we need uh, or, or we have to explore other options. But uh, this, this option uh, has, has provided the district with about $111,000 uh, in savings per year, just Central Middle School. I just want to reemphasize for the people at home, I'm sure the people here have caught it, but that the union agreement allows for us to do this privatization. That's correct. Thank you. Mr. Higley, one other last thing, too, that, and I think you said it, but I just want to make sure we're clear that we have the same individuals at Central on a daily basis. That's correct. So that uh, we have consistency within the building. It's not having people in and out, and that the kids are, will be they will see the same faces on a daily basis. That's why we've, we've asked for six, uh, the same number that we have now, anticipating that uh, one or two may get uh, flushed out of there uh, early on, possibly, uh, possibly not. But if not, again, that building will be reevaluated, and if it's deemed that they can do it with five, certainly they'll do that. Sure. Just one Which would make a greater savings then. That's right. Would, would this contract be price go down then? If they only put it would. Yeah. It would. It, it, this, the contract is based on the number of hours. Yeah. Yep. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? Okay, call the roll, please. This Thank is Van Hope. Yes. This is DeAngelis. Yes. This is Lazy. Yes. This is Suter. Yes. This is Thomas. Yes. Motion carries 5 0. Thank you. Now, item 18 is to consider two out of district field trips. The first one is a culture club trip to uh, New York City. And the second field trip uh, in this resolution is the Cisco College Tech Prep trip to Columbus uh, for the Business Professional America of America Leadership Conference. And Cisco is Computer uh, uh, Information Systems uh, Cooperative. No. Okay, computer. Computer Information Systems Cooperative. Or collaborative. Like, every time I, I get a different name on the last two, but the first it's, it's, three, it's the Cisco group at the, the high Cisco school. Cisco group at the high school. <laughs> the business leaders at, at the high school in two field trips uh, that we're asking for approval. Thank you. Any questions or comments? It's, it's not. Oh, okay. Um, is there a motion? So moved. Moved by Mrs. D'Angelo's second. Second by Mrs. Suter. No. Oh, Mrs. DeAngelis. Yes. Mrs. Lysen. Yes. Mrs. Suter. Yes. Mrs. Thomas. Yes. Mrs. Van Holt. Yes. Motion carries 5 0. Thank you. And then item 19 is to consider grant pay payments, and this is for our Saturday Academy, uh, the AIDS through a grant, and we're asking for a period. So moved. Moved by Mrs. DeAngelis, second by Mrs. Suter. Any questions or comments? If you call the roll, please. Mrs. Lysen. Yes. Mrs. Suter. Yes. Mrs. Thomas. Yes. Mrs. Van Ho. Yes. Mrs. DeAngelis. Yes. Motion carries 5 0. Did you have any informal? Sure. Just a couple of things. Uh, I just want to reiterate uh, Mrs. DeAngelis mentioned uh, some of the, the student uh, projects and some of the student accomplishments. I just want to go back and just really recognize all of the winter sport athletes and just uh, tell them how proud we are. I, I, she had talked about the uh, tournament game this past weekend, but we had other women's sport athletes that did an outstanding job, and I just want to tell on behalf of the board that uh, we're very, very proud of, of you. Uh, today in uh, Kevin, we happened to go over to um, Forest Park Middle School and had an opportunity to watch uh, their students uh, be recognized for service, and it was all about what they do to serve and, and um, how they are serving in the building, and it was really a great presentation in the fact that teachers have put together a video to thank the students that we were a part of. It was, a, it was really a, a very nice uh, celebration, so I, I commend um, the staff at Forest Park and the leadership there, and there are a lot of positive things that are happening there. So I just want to bring those two items to the attention of the board, and uh, uh, I think there's some positive direction, a lot of energy, a lot of positive energy that's going on at that middle school, and so we're real, real proud of them. So, Madam Chair, members of the board, that concludes my informant. Thank you. Do we have any communications or petitions? We do not. Any new or old business? We do not. Okay, we'll open up for any board members informal. Anyone have something? We have one last. 
been um, treated. I just would like to put in a plug for the 62nd annual uh, Euclid PTA scholarship fundraiser. It will be held Saturday, the 29th of March. Um, doors open at 6.30 and we will be host having the um, event at the Irish American Club, which is the 22770 Lakeshore Boulevard. Um, the event tickets are $30, and if you um, are interested in a ticket, you could uh, call 216-486-5987, and I'm sure we can fix you up with a great evening. And it's a very um, very nice fundraiser, and we usually give out between 15 and 20 uh, scholarships to um, qualifying and good seniors. So that would be great if you could um, help support that. And it's a fun evening. So it really is, and they always have baskets and all kinds of things to win. So it's fun. Ms. Okay, I just uh, wanted to say that uh, Ms. Thomas and I were able to attend the playoff game last. The, the, oh, I didn't see the she, she was there Saturday. Saturday. Oh, Saturday. Saturday. We're there Thursday. Oh, Thursday. 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 Yeah, Thursday. 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 And uh, wow, is that an exciting game. It really did come down in the last three minutes, or three seconds, I should say. And I do need to make a formal apology to our superintendent, Mr. Bell, because I think I may have knocked him down two rows in the bleachers with all of my excitement. So um, thanks for catching me. Thanks for not making a big deal out of it. And uh, Ms. Thomas and I and Mr. Bell were actually able to, uh, during halftime, go out into the hallways and do a little... Um, uh, public service announcement for our high school students as they prepare, prepare for OGT week. So that was good. So thank you, Ms. Well, thank Ms. Thomas, you. for showing up and supporting our district like that and then doing that little um, that little uh, public service announcement for our students. So. Um, I do want to say thank you to Mr. Bell and all of your leadership team who are sitting up here at the table and up here because I think it's really great that you go out to the schools and see the kids getting their awards. I think that that, they know it probably helps to energize you a little bit, but it's also great for the public to see that you're out in the buildings and recognizing students. And I know it always shows up on Facebook and I always share it. So, and I get a lot of comments back from people how much, um, how nice they think that it is that you're out there. Um, and I know that's a, a big change from the way it was years ago when the ivory tower here was kind of kept separate from the school, so um, I appreciate the fact that you're making that adjustment. Um, if you are not Facebook friends with the schools, we have a school Facebook page, we have each individual school has a Facebook page, so if there are calamity days or anything, you'll get the message several times, but that's okay. Um, the, the important part is that you get the information, and so if you're on Facebook, please Facebook the school so that you can get um, information and if you're a Facebook member, a friend with any of us, I think we probably all do the same thing and we share those announcements out and people, even who don't have children in the district, are happy to get that information. And um, they're finding ways to be proud of Euclid that they didn't even realize. So I think that's very, very important. Do you have something else you wanted to say? Yep, yeah. yeah, I just have one uh, one thing. I missed, uh, and Mrs. Leslie pointed out uh, this week. I'm, I meant to um, acknowledge the fact that this is Ohio graduation test week at the high school, and uh, uh, Dr. Smilek and his staff uh, have done an outstanding job. I'm going to update you all this week in the mail regarding some of the adjustments that we've made in the um, format and the presentation of the, uh, the testing opportunities for not only our sophomores, but also some learning and leadership opportunities for ninth graders. Uh, one of the things that we had talked about a year ago was that we thought ninth graders should be in the building, and uh, Ms. Dr. Smilek and his staff have made that adjustment, and I think you'd be really pleased with some of the things and activities that they, his staff has put together to support that initiative, so really, really happy uh, with that. And then the second thing is I wanted to introduce uh, Mr. Um, Bruce Ransom, who's sitting over there. He is a, why don't you stand up for a second there, Bruce. He is a uh, teacher in Cleveland and uh, is completing his internship. So if you see him around, he's working with uh, our team here uh, and working on his superintendent's uh, licensure and, uh, his, uh, uh, in, in that area. And so we're trying to give him all kinds of experiences, and uh, he's had an opportunity to work Walking around, his teaching schedule will be here, so we're just happy to have him in the district. I just want to make sure you can associate the name and the face 
And then the last thing I just want to say is uh, one of the things that I thought was important with Forest Park today was that they saw and were able to understand how we operate as a team because that was the emphasis today. And I wanted to make sure that they saw how important it is to have a really good team and these folks that sit in front of you are really a good team. So we were able to, to make that point. Madam President, that is finally it for me. I'm sorry, I was going to say something else and it brings another question. Well, that brings up a point. My daughter is a ninth grader who is doing something different at the high school compared to her sister, Samantha, who's a senior. And uh, it was a funny conversation that happened at my house over the weekend, how they were planning their week, she and her freshman friends. And uh, they were not at all disappointed that they weren't going to get the time off that they might have gotten. Um, they're doing field trips, they're planning for career, career college readiness, uh, they're doing additional testing. So. Um, my daughter and her friends are thrilled with the adjustments that are made, and I just wanted to say thank you. And I wish I would have recorded that conversation. I would have played it for you. It was uh, kudos to you and your staff over at the high school. So thank you, Dr. Smiley. Very good. Dr. Smiley, did you want to say anything about what you're doing this week? Yes, sir, I would. <laughs> and again, as he's coming to the podium, I'm going to give you some specifics on, uh, as I do weekly, just to kind of give you an update. But to get a chance to hear from the uh, the orchestrator, I think is probably even even better. So, mm -hmm. well, first I want to say that I, I really thank Mr. Bell for this. Uh, he brought this to us a year ago, and he thought that um, we would be better served by bringing our freshmen in. And, and in all honesty, we, we saw it as a little bit of a daunting challenge when we first started thinking about, about a year ago, because our our top priority this week has to continue to be to provide a, an excellent testing environment for our students who are taking the test. We certainly wouldn't want to uh, have any type of disruption in the building uh, as students move from place to place. It's very important that we provide really a lockdown uh, testing environment for our students. But when we began to talk about uh, this challenge from uh, our leadership team perspectives, we began to envision different opportunities. And I really thank our school leadership team for, for really starting to think of, of the possibilities instead of the challenges. I think that's really uh, sometimes we get caught up in, in some of the logistics and, and, and how it can be difficult. We started to think about how this could really benefit our students, and that's where we came up with plans to uh, provide five practice Ohio graduation tests. And we use the um, Ohio Success website to build those, and they follow the blueprints that the state lays forth for the Ohio graduation test. So in that way, our students will be preparing for the test that they will see a year from now. We also uh, will be able to provide teacher with data. I'm sorry, teachers with data. Um, to help them gauge where holes are in our students' learning and so that they have the time to remediate that before they will take the actual test. Um, also within that testing environment is, is a reflection sheet. This is uh, because it's electronically uh, provided by our Chromebooks that are part of our one-to-one -one initiative. Um, students are able to get instant feedback as well as a, a projected score uh, on the test. And so we ask them to actually look at the questions they've missed uh, think about why there's four different options as to why they missed it. Maybe they didn't read it correctly. Maybe they just didn't have that information yet. Um, so that, then they reflect upon it. Um, and, and that gives them the opportunity to really think about their own learning and, and where they need to go. Uh, so that's five activities. Uh, the other activities are we're actually showing the butler. Uh, we showed that to a group today. It's a very inspirational movie. And we have some discussion activities for students afterward. That's one of our activities. We're taking a college tour as well. Uh, that's one of the days. Our freshmen are, there's about 500 freshmen. They're broken into five groups of 100 students each. And so one of the days is a college tour. This is part of our culture achievement initiative. We wanted to make sure that students are understanding um, the, the realm of opportunities available to them after graduation. Uh, we also worked with College Now, which is a partnership that we've expanded this year to help us uh, form these partnerships with, with colleges. Uh, two days is Cleveland State, or two days are Cleveland State, I should say. One day is Ursula. Uh, one day was Tri-C Metro. That was today's trip, and they had a, a phenomenal experience at Tri-C Metro. And then the, the fifth day is actually Lake Erie College, which is the um, university that we have a partnership with uh, for dual enrollment purposes for next year. And they've been very accommodating. They're very excited to get our students out of campus so that they can begin uh, to start tallying their own merits as options for our students and as options for, for our, our, our students that will take uh, dual enrollment classes. So um, we believe that we've provided that opportunities. The last piece that Mrs. Lizey kind of mentioned was that we are providing a STEM career um, exploration. That's also through the Chromebook. Students take a survey designed to um, see what their highlights and their strengths are according to STEM careers. And then they're actually able to plan uh, kind of a path that would help them to pursue that. So it's a lot. Um, it was a lot of organization, but we're very proud of it. Um, 
you know, it, it's easy to say, okay, here's the status quo, and here's what we do. And Mr. Bell challenged that. He challenged us and our teams, I believe, uh, rose to the challenge in a way that really provides meaningful activities for our students. Great. Great. Sounds exciting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, excited. It was a great day. I mean, it really, people were nervous because, you know, we, we were used to having that, that lockdown silent environment, but it was it was great with our freshmen. They really attended to, to the activities that we had for them. Madam President, and members of the board, I just want to just make sure that the board knows, too, how um, his team has embraced a different paradigm because this has been a paradigm shift in the past. We've allowed ninth graders, we've allowed them out. We've really just focused on the OGT or the higher graduation test. That's been the primary focus, and we really kind of let everything else go. And I was just making myself a note. One of the questions, one of the tough questions that you get asked as an educator um, when a student is not performing well, and they ask you, and they, they ask you the question, so why do I need to go to class if I'm not performing well? My response has always been you have to practice going to class. So you don't know how to, you can't do what you don't practice. So if you don't practice those things, it makes it very difficult when you put in a situation to actually do what you haven't practiced. So with our ninth graders, what we, what we hope and what we think will happen is that they have practiced in seeing that which is expected of them, which gives them a better chance of being successful because they've had to practice. And so that's been, the, been that. But I just want to just really commend the, the staff because they, they, and Dr. Smiley is absolutely correct, you can look at it as an obstacle. They looked at it as an opportunity, and uh, so I do appreciate what they've done, what they what they're doing, and uh, I think we're going to really see some um, uh, some some movement with our ninth graders and even with our, our tenth graders with the organization and with what they've been what they've done to, to put this together. So I commend you and your staff for a good first day. Thank you. I'm considering all the things that you've done, and starting with the beginning of school with our handprints and pledges to graduate. I think this is just another continuation of that initiative, and it's really exciting. And with the time change today, <laughs> everybody, everybody there, you know, which isn't an easy, it's always an easy thing. And so, Dr. You said it's a good fall. Yeah. So, <laughs> that was helpful too. So, yeah. Is, that, is, is there any talk in the future, maybe next year, like doing the juniors, like a boot camp for ACT or SAT test prep? We continue to look at ways to um, expand upon our, our ACT uh, preparation. We focus for the most part on ACT, not SAT, um, only because of the, the resources that are available from ACT and also the, the, the uh, conferences that we've attended uh, for ACT. And yeah, we would like to pursue uh, potentially what we're calling a college blitz day, where they would have that type of preparation activity. And some of the schools do that during this week. Because the OGT, they do it for the juniors. But I'm just kind of curious to see if that's a possibility to expand this on. Absolutely. The ACT is what state schools and most private schools in Ohio use. Are, are more emphasizing, that's correct. Yeah. So, and the SAT, who knows when they're, with their changes, what's going to happen on 2016. 2016, are the big changes happening mm -hmm. for them? Okay, thank you, Dr. Smiley. Thank you. All right, at this time, are there any visitor comments? Seeing none, I'll take a motion for adjournment. I move. Moved by Mrs. D'Angelo, second. Second. By Mrs. Sudar. All the roll, please. Mrs. Lysey. Yes. Mrs. Sudar. Yes. Mrs. Thomas. Yes. Mrs. Van Holt. Yes. Mrs. D'Angelo. Yes. Mr. Carries 5-0. We are adjourned. Thank you. Thank you.